Welcome to our education, Exploring the Patient Journey. Let's talk about ILD and IPF. My name is Amy Olson, and I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine at National Jewish Health in Denver, Colorado. This is the second in a series of three modules on IPF. The modules in this curriculum are designed to be completed in sequence. Let's discuss how to recognize and diagnose IPF. To review, Mr. Joe is a 67-year-old former smoker who presents with a dry cough for 18 months and progressive shortness of breath on exertion for the past year. His cough is worsened with ambulation in the morning. He's had a history of reflux but thinks it's relatively controlled. He had asthma as a child but does not note wheeze or chest tightness. He also had a cardiac evaluation at the onset of his cough and was told his heart is healthy. Patients can spend up to two years before being accurately diagnosed with IPF. It's been reported that 38% of patients see three or more physicians before an accurate diagnosis is made. Importantly, delayed diagnosis means a longer time before the initiation of treatment. When do you suspect ILD? For patients with exertional shortness of breath or chronic cough, listen carefully for crackles at the bases of the lungs. Examine the digits and joints for evidence of autoimmune disease, order spirometry and a chest x-ray, and do an informal hallway walk test to look for exertional desaturation. If any of these are suggestive of interstitial lung disease, a high-resolution CT should be ordered. IPF is diagnosed by identification of a pattern of usual interstitial pneumonia or UIP on the basis of radiological or histological criteria after the exclusion of alternative causes, including autoimmune diseases and environmental exposures that may be associated with possible hypersensitivity pneumonitis. When UIP is clear on the HRCT, the diagnosis of IPF can be confirmed without the need for a surgical lung biopsy. Getting back to our patient, pulmonary function tests indicated that Mr. Joe had a total lung capacity of 77% of predicted, a forced vital capacity or FVC of 67% of predicted, and a forced expiratory volume in one second or FEV1 of 69% of predicted. His diffusion was 59% of predicted, and on the six minute walk test, his oxygen saturation started at 93% and fell to 87 by six minutes. Collectively, these findings are consistent with restrictive lung disease and abnormal gas exchange. Mr. Joe's blood work indicated negative autoimmune serologies and a negative hypersensitivity pneumonitis panel. A high resolution CT scan was ordered for Mr. Joe, including axial and coronal views, prone and supine positions, as well as both inspiratory and expiratory breathing patterns. These are the four features we are looking for for a UIP pattern. We'd like to see a subpleural basal predominance, reticular abnormalities, honeycombing, with or without traction bronchiectasis, and the absence of inconsistent features. Let's walk through some high-resolution CT images for this patient. In the apices of the lungs, we can see that there are reticulations, which are fine, lacy lines indicating areas of fibrosis. These are noted by the arrows. As we move down through the lungs, we see that there's more disease. In the top right corner, you can see cysts and honeycombing. These are circled. And below, we still see more reticulation denoted by the arrows. This scan shows more disease down at the bases and is starting to weave its way into the lung parenchyma on the right. There is also traction bronchiectasis noted here. Now let's review the expiratory images. 
The key point to notice in this expiratory view is that there's no air trapping when the patient breathes out. Air trapping suggests the airways are involved and would imply either a connective tissue disease or hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Those diseases tend to affect the airways, whereas IPF tends to affect the lung parenchyma alone. Finally, let's look at a coronal image for Mr. Joe. Here you can see more disease at the base of the lung and progressing up the sides. This is how the disease progresses. Again, the arrows denote reticulation, the circles on the periphery denote honeycombing. In this patient, each one of these features was present. Mr. Joe has a confirmed UIP pattern on his HRCT. As we consider Mr. Joe's case and review the diagnostic algorithm, there were no identifiable causes for interstitial lung disease. If you recall, his serologies were negative. A UIP pattern was clearly present on the high-resolution CT scan, therefore a surgical lung biopsy was not needed to confirm the diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. We have now confirmed Mr. Joe has IPF. Let's look at the next video to learn about the importance of early referral and treatment and the best approach to managing the disease.